Today we're going to talk about rates. Rates are really powerful things in math. They can solve a tremendous amount of everyday problems if you know how to work with them. And the only thing you have to remember is that a rate is a comparison of two quantities with different units. A ratio has the same units, but rates have different units, like you're comparing the number of girls to boys in a class, cats to dogs, dollars to ounces. All right, here's an example for you. Let's say I'm traveling to the Apple Store, and it's 65 miles to get there, and it takes me an hour and 15 minutes to get there. Well, the rate that this that describes this situation is 65 miles to 1.25 hours, because 0.25 is one fourth, and 15 minutes is a quarter of an hour. So we've got two different units, miles compared to hours. Now, if you want to find out my unit rate, in other words, how fast I'm going in one hour, my miles per one hour, all we have to do is We're define. looking at 52 miles per one hour. All right. Now, this is known as the unit rate. Okay? Whenever you actually do the division on a rate, and get the denominator down to one, one unit, in this case it was one hour, what you're left with is the unit rate. Let's say I say to you guys, okay, it's going to take me an hour and 15 minutes or 1.25 hours to go 65 miles. All right, this is exactly the same situation as this, but are these two fractions equal to each other? No, absolutely not, they're not. Okay, but it's still describing the same rate. All right, now the unit rate on this one's gonna look a lot differently. Please go ahead and um, do the division here to get the unit rate, and we'll find out how many hours it takes me to go one mile. So it's approximately 0 0.02 hours for one mile. All right, so that would be your unit rate. Now, I don't know about 1.2 minutes. minutes. All right, now that I have a feel for. It takes me 1.2 minutes to go one mile at this particular rate. Of and 25 pages. And we have to divide that total amount by this rate. 32 pages every one day, okay? 32 pages every one day. Okay, that's your unit rate, and you're dividing that unit rate into this total number of pages. Now, remember that to divide by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, okay? So, I'm gonna go ahead and take this division problem and I'm going to rewrite it as a multiplication of the reciprocal problem. Watch what happens when I do that. All right, so I'm going to get 62 or 625 pages times, now the reciprocal of 32 pages per day is one day over 32 pages. One day over 32 pages. All right, now, here's something that's kind of weird. You may have never seen this before. The units on a rate aren't just words off to the side. They are an integral part of the problem. They can cancel, just like a fraction can reduce, okay? Pages can go into itself once, and pages can go into itself once, okay? The pages can divide out, so to speak, and the unit that you will be left with is just days. And by George, by Jingo, that's what you want. You want to know how many days it's going to take to read this many pages. So please take your calculator and please tell me what is 625 divided by 32? About 19.5 days. Okay. 
So it is approximately 19 and a half? <coughs> okay, 19 and a half days. So what you're going to find as these problems get harder is that you will literally depend upon the units. You will look at the units and you'll say, I don't know what to put on the top, I don't know what to put on the bottom, so I'm just going to force it until the right units cancel out and I am left with what I want. It's unbelievable, but rate problems can be done by looking at the And we need to make a note here that rates can be negative too. All, right? all you need to have is something that's dropping or decreasing over a period of time to illustrate that. So here we have a temperature problem. Friday the temperature is going to drop 37 degrees in five hours. What is the rate of temperature change in degrees per hour? Okay, so we're going <coughs> degrees to hours. Now this is a drop. So we cannot write just 37. We have to write negative 37 because it's decreasing. And we'll put degrees in five hours. All right, now, I need the yeah, unit drop like of 7.4 degrees every one hour. So it's very possible to end up with negative. can travel zero miles in three hours. And I ask you, what is my unit rate? Okay. Well, let's think about this. This is basically a division problem. So zero miles, it takes me three hours to go zero miles, so how far am I going in one hour? Zero divided by three is zero. So my unit rate is zero miles for one hour. Basically, I am sitting in a chair. I am not moving, okay? So this physically can rates can be looked at either way, but notice I did not switch the units, okay? Now let's think about this. I'm going three miles in zero hours. So no time has elapsed and I've traveled three miles. In other words, I am in two places at the same time, which defies the laws of, of physics. This cannot try happen. and take three and divide it by zero, you are going to get not even your calculator, you're going to get an error. Not even your calculator will give you an answer here. You will get error or cannot perform or syntax error or divide by zero error. It all depends what, you know, brand your calculator is. This problem, this little tiny baby problem will actually even stop computers. It will cause a divide by zero error and it will cause the computer to stop functioning. So these are things we really, really, really need to look out for. Let's say we ended up with a problem that looked like this. x plus 7 over x minus 9. All right? That was our final answer. And we needed to specify for which values this particular expression would give us a divide by 0 error. The only number in the world that's going to cause a divide by zero error here is positive 9. Because if I put in a positive 9, I will get 9 minus 9, which is 0. So this would be the answer with this condition, where x cannot be equal to positive 9. So on occasions, even if you're writing uh, computer programs, you will have to put conditions on your variable to make sure you don't run into divide by zero errors.